Welcome back everyone to Jake Writes a Book. My name is Jake and I am trying to write a book. Today I want to talk about something specific. Specifically a novelette I wrote called The Dead Man at Table 8. Before we begin today, I want to address what's been going on in the comment section. Multiple subscribers have made note of the fact that for a channel titled Jake Writes a Book, I haven't been doing a great deal of book writing. I would say no book writing has occurred. That's why for today's episode, we're going to get down and dirty with a novelette I wrote called The Dead Men at Table 8. It's not a book, but it's close. <laughs> We've already established why it's good to start with shorter stories before progressing to larger works. And so while I am still working on The Switchers, my horror novel during the weekends, I am trying to focus most of my energy during the week on short stories, including this novelette or novella. I'm not sure on the exact word count. Let's pull that up, Sam. Okay, so apparently a novel is 40,000 words or over. A short story is 7,500. A novella is 17,500 to 39,999. And a novelette is 7,500 to 17,499. Okay. So my story is actually 13,000 words, so technically yes, it is a novelette. Let's hear it for the novelette, yay. Yeah, yeah. I wrote the first draft of this novelette last summer and have since then let it hibernate for a very long time in a manila envelope. Since then I've revised it, sent it out to my inner circle, and made countless revisions on top of all that. Too many revisions, in fact. I have held on to this story for way too long. But now it is finally time to make my last revisions before sending the story to publishers. I would be honored for you guys to join me now for the last edit. After all, we're here to write a book, so let's get there by honing our craft on smaller projects. Book story summary to get everyone on the same page before we begin the final edit. The story is titled The Dead Man at Table 8. It is set during the 1920s and the 1930s in a billiard parlor slash speakeasy called Zigzags. Our hero slash protagonist is a jazz pianist drifter, Skunk Parkley. Pianist, Sam? All right, let's be mature, please. And Skunk's nemesis, is the notorious gambler, bootlegger, hustler, Kid Stevens. The owner of Zigzags is Terence Sinetti, a real sad sack with a stoic demeanor who sits alone at Zigzags every night with a Manhattan that he doesn't drink. Terence Sinetti's lifeless personality as the owner of the parlor inspires his quasi-demeaning nickname, the dead man at Table 8, where he sits. Because... Like the wasteful, not environmentally friendly man. Zigzags, the patrons within, and the dead man himself are full of secrets, mystery, and tragedy. This story explores the mystery of the parlor throughout the decades and does this by examining the lives of several recurring characters. I hope you get the chance to read it as a published work, but if not, we'll post it on Reddit or something. <laughs> I don't know. First things first, let's format the first page. All right, we have our title here. So the first thing that we should know is that everything has to be in the same font, obviously. Um, most publishers aren't gonna like crazy fonts. Every submission is going to have to be different, but the one guarantee that is fairly certain is that they want a standard font. We're talking Times New Roman, basic stuff. Some recommend Courier, but I think that looks kind of weird and I'm not sure if every publisher likes it. So we're gonna click Command A to select all of our writing, our entire story. And we're gonna change it to Times New Roman font, size 12, which is what most prefer. Even the name of your work should be the same font and size as the rest. In the upper left-hand corner, that's where your personal information goes, such as your name, address, email, and phone number. So we're just gonna put Jake, <laughs> last name, my address, 999 Dongle Drive, Whopperton, Michigan, 555555. Five, 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 five. Yeah, there we go. So that's like about approximately what you want. And up here, we're going to put our word count in. Ooh, 12,715 words. So we're going to round that up. You uh, always want to do approximations here unless asked for the exact word count value. Then we're going to space that all the way over here. Next, what you're going to want to have is you're going to want to space this bad boy all the way down, a third down at least, or half a page down. And then another space and the byline. Whatever your author name is, it doesn't actually need to be your real name, though normally it is. 
Uh, for the point of simplicity, I'm going to take out my prologue there just because it's going to gunk up and complicate things later. And the last big stroke that we're going to want to do, at least for this first page, is just go ahead right now, Command A, and we're going to double space everything. Almost every single publication universally wants you to submit your writing double spaced. And this is so the editor can make notes digital or not uh, in the margins. Proper formatting isn't gonna save your story if it's gonna be rejected, but many great stories have been rejected right out of the box just because they did not do their formatting basics. Um, I forgot to do that at first, so I'm gonna go back up here to my personal information and move that back to uh, you know, single space or 1.15, whatever it was. There, that should be good, like so. All right, next we're gonna talk about headers and footers. You definitely need those. Um, you don't just want to put your page number like it is now in that bottom right corner. No good. Most publications like you to do uh, headers. So let's go ahead and remove what our current page number is. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to click here to access the footer and take out the page number there because we don't want it. Great. Now we're going to move to the second page. We're going to leave that first page alone in regards to page count. Most of the time, you don't want to start including your page number on the first page. So you're going to want to go to page two to put in your header. To access your header, you're just going to double click it. It might be a little bit different on uh, Windows than it is on Mac. Um, <laughs> it'll probably be simpler on yeah. Windows than it is on Mac. So the first thing you're going to want to do is put in your last name in the right hand corner, last name, space, slash space the title of your work summarized into like one or two words if you can so my story is called the dead man of table a i'm just going to call it dead man slash space and now here comes the tricky part you should on a windows i believe just be able to click insert page number current position and it's that simple not so on mac i believe on mac and feel free to correct me in the comments if i'm wrong you have to go to Click on that header and footer tab since we got it open. Click all on field. Scroll down on field names till you get to page. Click OK. And boom, there you go. You got it right there. Uh, I know it takes a few more steps, but trust me, Sam and I have <laughs> took us forever to find that. So that's how you do it on a Mac. Um, what you can do now just to avoid this process in the future is uh, just copy and paste it. Um, and then obviously change the title of your work for the rest of your submissions in Word or Google Docs. Uh, final thing, make sure that you format these into Times New Roman 12. Um, it'll look really amateurish if you forget to do that. So we'll click format that right there. There's a few other neat little tips and tricks, like you can do um, a hashtag symbol if you ever want there to be a break in your story. You never want to just have a couple loose indents. You want there to be that hashtag symbol. Uh, finally, once you reach the end of your story, you can choose to write end if you so desire. At the very bottom, just put in a big old end or the end. I chose not to do it because some publications view that as redundant. <laughs> And so there you go, woohoo, there's our formatting. You're ready to submit, wrong. It is not yet time to submit. Before you do that, there's one more thing you should do. Actually, two more things you should do. I lied, there are two more things. The first thing that you should do is look at the specific publisher's submission guidelines. Every single publisher that I've seen has submission guidelines that do have actually sort of surprising nuances sometimes. I've seen some that do require you to do single space. I've seen some that specify like a specific type of font. Some require you to write a cover letter, some don't. You just really gotta check out those submission guidelines before you submit. Second, it's super important to reread your work one last time to proofread and to eliminate needless words and mistakes. Going to my own story, I highlighted some simple mistakes I made such as double check whether I should write second avenue numerically or with words. Turns out in most cases, you're gonna wanna go with words unless the number is over, I think it was 20. But see, that's the sort of thing that you're gonna have to look up. I forget, you're gonna have to look it up. Oh wow, look at this, embarrassing mistake. I misspelled Jimi Hendrix. That probably would have gotten a lot of people mad. Uh, here's another example. Rereading the story, I decided the dead man at table eight. That's a nickname. Should it be capitalized or should it not? Look it up, it's the final edit. I mentioned right here that somebody has a birthday cake. That's lame, upon my final reading, I think that I should specify what kind of birthday cake that is. It'll just help add more legitimacy to the story. Don't be vague. Finally, one last thing I did in this story was really take the advice of my critics to heart. 
As we know, if two or more members of your inner circle agree on a certain element, it's good to listen to them. If just one person brings up something that they especially like or dislike about the story, you can sort of do what you will with that information. For this story, I had a really rushed conclusion, and that was from some very good feedback I got from a friend. I ended up agreeing with him, even though he was the only one who gave me the note. I went back and I added a bit more tension in the final scene of this novelette. But it's important to not just, you know, add that final scene and then go off and submit it. I submitted that, I let it wait another day or two, and then I reread the whole thing in its entirety to make sure that it was ready to submit. Also, there's the William Shun Guide. That is super helpful, and I recommend everyone check it out before they submit. We'll put a link in the description. There you have it, everyone. The Dead Man at Table 8. Did you love this video? Did you hate it? Will this novelette ever be published? Let us know in the comment section what you think. Next week, we submit the story. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and to send your Skunk Parkley fanfiction to my house. Keep reading, keep writing, and I'll see you next time.